Welcome back to February, where we are talking about exercise, and we're talking about all different types of exercise, um, and kind of outside the norm of what we think of exercise, what it should be. Um, so, before we get started, Dr. Jess, what is in your glass this evening? I have this uh, new cup that I got from the company that I order a lot of stuff for the clinic through, you know, anything that we have branded is from this company and I'm going to promote this company because my cousin works for it. So it's so bad promotions and this cup keeps my water nice and cold. So I have lime and no rather, sorry, lemon, cucumber, ginger, and mint in here so that I have my infused water. It's nice and cold and I drink more this way. Uh, so Dr. Bobby, what's in your glass? You know, I have plain water. It's in my nice Namaste uh, cup that I got from a coworker that I really appreciate. It was a present. Um, and again, it keeps it nice and cold. I'm one, I know there's like super awesome benefits of warm or uh, kind of room temperature water with like lemon, but I just love ice in my water. I like cold water. Um, so it keeps it cold for a long time. Yeah. Uh, so today what we're going to be talking about in the month of exercise is specifically cardiovascular exercise. So we think of exercise as kind of this like shot in the dark of like this equals exercise, but really exercise is a lot of different things. And so last week we talked about strength training and how strength training can look a lot of different ways for different people. So if you didn't watch that episode, Definitely watch that episode. We interviewed two physical therapists that are like, it's a different ways of strengthening than we are, um, and their um, specifics and sub specialties with inside of that. So that is important and needs to be included. Um, also, what needs to be included is cardiovascular exercise. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Bobby, when we say cardiovascular exercise, I mean, we hear that if you're a heart patient, yeah. right? Right. Um, but like, what does that mean? So cardiovascular exercise is basically anything that kind of elevates your heart rate and it can elevate. So there's different types of cardiovascular exercise. There's cardiovascular exercise that increases our heart rate and sustains at this high level for a certain amount of time. But then there's also benefits from cardiovascular exercise where it's increases the heart rate and then drops for a little bit and it increases and down. So it's kind of like this up and down pattern. Both are very beneficial to our heart. It just kind of depends on your passions, your goals, your where do you want to go from there. Um, and when we're talking about cardiovascular exercise, mm -hmm. we're talking about 30 minutes, five times a week. That 30 minutes does not need to be straight. It can be 10 minutes, three times. Um, but looking at getting 30 minutes, five times a week. So that 30 minutes can look very different. And right now in my workout versus Dr. Jess's workout, our 30 minutes looks very different. Um, so Dr. Jess, tell us like, what do you do for your cardiovascular exercise? Yeah. So, so I think the other thing I want to point out is that it, it can be 30 minutes, five days a week, but it can also be different than that, right? Mm -hmm. It could also be 45 minutes or an hour but then less on other days. Yeah. So like ultimately what we would like is for that to culminate into 150 yes. minutes over the course of a week. And so I'll say that I typically do my cardio in three days. Okay. So I get my, that's kind of how I, how I get that in. That way I get my strength training in the other two days and then I have two rest days. Um, and on my rest days, I am still doing stretching and mobility, which we are going to talk about in the upcoming um, episodes later this month. Um, but that's kind of what works out better for me. So I enjoy running. That's just my thing. That's what I like. I've been running for over 20 years. And the way I break up my running is that I do one long day on one of the days on the weekend, and then I'll do a shorter day um, you know, on two days during my, my work week. And that way I can push it on my long days and I have more time to push it on my long days because that's on a weekend. And then on my days that I run during the week, I typically will do that before work. And so that way I know I get, I get it in and I have a running partner and that's you know what kind of works for me. And I change my running depending on the time of the year. So for us in Florida, running distance is 
easier in the winter than it is in the summer because we get really high temperatures, lots of humidity, lots of heat. And um, it's not it's not wrong to run distance. It was just, I would have to start so early in the morning to get in a long run. Um, I, I don't get to bed early enough having two kids to like really be able to do that consistently. Mm -hmm. And so I will increase my, my uh, duration of running in, um, you know, I start in fall, increase it during the winter. I've got some races that I run and then I'll taper it back down once the weather gets warm. And then I might increase my running to four days a week since I'm decreasing my mileage. Um, so then I still get my 150 minutes or plus per week. Um, so that's kind of what that looks like for me. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Jess really loves running and that's like what she consists, what consists of her cardio. Yeah. And that does not need to be your cardio. Nope. It is definitely not my cardio. Yeah. Uh, and so cardio can be walking. It can be walking outside. It can be walking on a treadmill. A lot of people I think don't understand the benefits of walking on a treadmill with an incline. Mm -hmm. um, like that can almost get your heart rate up more. Sometimes mm -hmm. for me, it can get my heart rate up higher on a really significant incline than when I'm running my normal pace. Um, not running super fast, but just my normal pace, my heart rate can actually get higher on an incline. So I think that's important to note. To note. Mm -hmm. Now I personally, if you listen to back in January, you listen to our goal setting, I am working on running a half marathon. So I am training, I am starting to walk. However, last week, um, I was blessed with uh, the mm -hmm. flu. <laughs> Haven't had that in forever. And so at this point, walking is a challenge for me. It's for, for my lungs. And so giving it my body the patience to heal while still kind of challenging it in a healthy way has been um, challenging. And I'm just starting to get feel fine where I can actually start to do some type of exercise. But again, that's looking very different for me right now. Um, just my daily activities of taking care of my daughter, um, walking up and down the stairs, that right now, according to my Apple Watch, is getting my heart rate enough for exercise. Um, and so I think we just need to realize that cardiovascular training can be very different depending on where you're starting, where you are. Yeah. And if we're starting at that very basic level, that's awesome and amazing, and it's a great place to start. And maybe just increasing your activity level at home, um, especially if you have one of the watches that watches your heart rate, that might be enough to get that 30 minutes in of cardiovascular training. Absolutely. Yeah, and when we say cardio training, I mean, you could be doing a class in the pool, you could be on a rower, you could be on a bike, you could be walking, anything where, like how you know you're getting your heart rate elevated is because typically your breathing rate is going to increase as well. And so you're gonna notice yourself having a harder time uh, breathing and having a harder time kind of maintaining that conversation. That's what we mean by cardiovascular mm -hmm. exercise. And so it could be, I mean, rowing, it could be surfing, it could be, I mean, anything where you're just doing this continuous activity, the point for health benefits is that you sustain it mm -hmm. for a period of time. Just because you, you know, decide, I mean, it's great to walk across the parking lot, you know, park further away from the store and walk to the store, that's amazing. But it's one step in the direction of 150 cumulative minutes over the course of the week, which is eventually the goal that we want to try and hit. Eventually. You know what I realized recently is a great cardiovascular activity? Mopping. Yeah. And so I think sometimes we don't give enough credit because when you're mopping and you're mopping floors, it typically takes you 10, 20, 30 minutes to mop the floor and you're scrubbing, you're pushing and, and it's tiring, especially if it's not something you're used to doing. Right. And so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a run, a row. A, it can be gardening. Let's say you go mm -hmm. out and you're in this, you're up and down and moving and pulling, like anything that gets your heart rate above its normal yep. um, and higher. Um, a lot of times we talk about the talk test. So like when you're doing an activity, a good long distance cardio, you should be able, you should be a little out of breath, but you should still be able to hold a conversation when you're like in three that. Three words at a time. But when you're, you're in that four, higher yeah. part, yeah. that's when it's like becoming harder. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. It, sh it shouldn't be so hard that you can't get words out, um, but you should be able to get out like at least three words at a time of like, 
oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and then you take your breath. And how do you feel? And you take a breath. And you know, yeah. so you're sustaining a conversation, but it's still not like this full, complete sentence where it's very easy yeah. to get the word to get the words out because that means that you are able to get the heart rate elevated and the respiration rate is going to elevate at the same time. Why this matters is because this is the training that we're doing for the heart and lungs. And that's the real benefit of being able to like keep that going for an extended period, ideally getting that up to your, so you can sustain this for 30 minutes. That doesn't mean you're going to start there, but you do want to be able to sustain the activity ideally for minimum of 30 minutes for true heart health um, uh, benefits, whether it's proactive or reactive. Reactive meaning you've already had some sort of um, illness or something has come up and now we're trying to get that heart healthy again or lungs healthy again um, in a proactive way. This is probably the number one thing that you can do to benefit every system of your body. Because as we breathe in, we're pulling in oxygen into our lungs. Our lungs have to then deliver that oxygen to the blood cells. And then the blood cells get diffused throughout our body to, you know, innervate and, and bring the oxygen to our muscles and ligaments and, you know, organs and everything else. And then what is excess comes back to the lungs and then we exhale that out. And then the whole process goes back over again. And then we breathe in, we breathe in that oxygen. All of this cellular work happens through our like every aspect of our body, including our brain. And then we exhale out what we don't need, which is carbon dioxide. And so the more efficient that we become with that system, every system of the body benefits. So the neurologic system, cardiovascular system, musculoskeletal system, our nervous system, our endocrine system, how our hormones are functioning, all of it, because there's like a lot that happens with like hormones and, and mood benefits and all this other stuff that can happen as we're exercising, especially with cardiovascular exercise, that it's like, it's really kind of the number one thing we could do for like whole health. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're describing is something, what we call the VO2 max. <laughs> so if you are looking at you know, sometimes it's nice to have a number. Sometimes it's nice to be able to have a goal to be able to see. So for example, we talked about last week with strength training or for running, you know, I was able to run a mile last week and, or last month, this month I can run two miles. Sometimes it's nice to have that physical measurement mm -hmm. to show our progress. So one thing that we can measure is our VO2 max. And that is looking at your system's ability to exchange oxygen and provide to our muscles um, efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a few ways we can test it. Um, some of them are a little bit more professional on a treadmill. Um, some of them are, you know, through an Apple Watch. It can kind of, if you're running though, I will say with the Apple Watch, you have to run with it. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a really neat way to kind of track progress. So I don't know if you've ever had that, if you've ever done the test. I have, but I've done a, I've, I've done a VO2 max, <laughs> more than one VO2 max test in a clinical setting. Um, <laughs> and we, we laugh because it's, it's meant to max out. So if we, you know, cause we think of like a one rep max in the gym and you're maxing out how much weight can you lift in just one rep and max out your muscular system, you're doing this for your cardiovascular system <laughs> on a treadmill um, while you have a mask on your face <laughs> to measure your gas exchange. Um, so uh, it, it's, a, it's an uncomfortable test. And yeah. that is the intention is that when you're at your max, it is uncomfortable. Um, so uh, so I have done that and, and you don't need to do that no. um, by any means, but it, you know, for research purposes, um, it, it is helpful as the gold standard. Um, but what I will say is typically like your heart rate recovery is going to be the life. easiest test that you can do <clears throat> at home. And so, and what that looks like is if you go onto like any sort of like watch and if that will measure your heart rate, like on the Apple watch, it's the heart, you know, the little heart icon will show you your, um, your current heart rate. And so you can kind of get used to just looking at that for like, what is my resting heart rate? So when I'm just at rest, not doing anything, where does that number range? Is it, you know, in the fifties, is it in the eighties or nineties? Right. Um, so we would like to see that down into like, you know, somewhere in the you know high sixties, low seventies, 
um, as like a very healthy resting heart rate and that would be kind of a goal to shoot for um, if you have a good strong cardiovascular system. Um, if you don't like that resting heart rate might be up into the 70s 80s and then once it gets kind of high that's going to be more into what we would consider like needs to be managed by a cardiologist yeah, by yeah, yeah, or something right. like that mm -hmm. um, but now if you kind of just kind of get a set a sense of what's my resting heart rate then kind of track that heart rate when you do activity running walking um, doing some strength training whatever it might be see where that number gets right how high is that number getting and then um, just and you just kind of want to track this over time, maybe like a couple of workouts, a couple of walks, a couple of runs, and then notice take that heart rate a minute after you stop the activity. So let's say like you you know you go for a walk, you're like breathing pretty hard, and your heart rate gets up to 150 beats per minute, like 150, um, and you sit down and for 60 seconds. I mean, truly, like measure this 60 seconds later, and then see what that heart rate is. When you aren't yet conditioned, um, I say yet, meaning it's inevitable you will be because you're going to continue to do this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> notice how my patients are like, how did you get me to commit to this? <laughs> like, Because I just convinced you that this is going to happen. Um, so when that when you see that heart rate come down and it's down to like over the course of a minute down to 145, well, it only really dropped five beats in 60, five beats in 60 seconds. So that shows us that your body is going to take a while to recover from mm -hmm. that. Now, where you can really track your progress is as as you get more and more efficient with your cardiovascular system, you will see that heart rate drop much, much faster. And so this is where you can use journaling to really help track mm -hmm. your progress. Because no matter what, when you're pushing your body, it's uncomfortable. That's the whole point is that you're pushing yourself to a point of stress and then you're accommodating to that stress. That's how you grow. So it's like people sometimes will get frustrated. This isn't getting any easier. I feel like it should be easier. I'm like, well, you're running. <laughs> like, it's, it's not meant to be easy yeah. or you're sprinting yeah. or you're lifting or whatever. It's not meant to be an at rest activity. This is a working activity. Um, so if you can just track like, what was my heart rate when I right when I finish the activity, I sit for 60 seconds, and then what's my heart rate? Mm -hmm. And you'll see that that heart rate starts dropping much, mm -hmm. much faster. That's how you can really start tracking how is my fitness doing a very easy at home test. It's called yeah. your heart rate recovery. I, and it, I like that one. And then mm -hmm. I, I don't know about you, but I also notice the more the the stronger my heart becomes, the more conditioning I do, the more it takes for my heart rate to get high. Right. So now it's kind of like a double thing. It's one, it's going to take more for that heart rate to elevate, but then you're going to recover faster. Absolutely. Um, and that's going to show mm -hmm. an improvement in your cardiovascular fitness. Right. Yep. Um, so, I mean, there's different ways if you really want to do some pre and post. Like if you really want to be strategic with this, you could do the three minute step test. Mm -hmm. And so that's like a reproducible measurement. Um, I think a lot of people are super interested in necessarily doing testing. They like just saying like, like I know how I typically feel after the exercise I'm already doing and then just kind of tracking that progress that way. It's very fast. But if you did want to be more scientific about it, um, you would just have a, you know, some sort of like a step in your home, a step to enter your home, something like that. Just one step and you just, you know, hit start. You just kind of walk up and down that step for, you know, just say you do it for a minute, 90 seconds, something like that, right? Up and down that step to a cadence of like, you know, like a, I mean, you can look this up. It's called, I think, the YMCA step test. Um, but there's like a, a set cadence that you kind of follow on a metronome, and then you stop, take your heart rate, 60 seconds later, take it again. So you could reproduce a, like a more, you know, quantitative test that way. Um, I will do that if we're specifically trying to track something, mm -hmm. um, but typically for an at-home um, program, when somebody is just trying to say like, I'm feeling frustrated, then um, I feel like I'm not making the gains I want. I'm like, let's look back at where you were. Yeah. Let's look back and that's why journaling is very important because not that you're writing paragraphs about like, this is how I feel about my exercise <laughs> progression. You, know? you can. You can, that's not wrong, but like, you know, it's like when people say I don't have time, it's like, do you have time to write down like three words? You know, so that's, a, that's the kind of time I'm talking about. Like, it's not, like what did you get done today um whether it was like strength cardio whatever it might be 
and you might kind of jot down your heart rate recovery, you know, um, whatever it is that you really want to work towards and whatever you want to track, just kind of make a note of that. So like you track that per day, per week, however you want to track it. And you will look back and see, oh, wow, mm -hmm. I have made progress. And that's how you don't lose your um, focus on this journey of trying to get more active and really improve your health um, from many, many, many different aspects. Um, I mean, this is just like irrefutable evidence. Like, I mean, it's, it's like crazy how important the cardiovascular exercise yeah. is um, for real, you know. And then if you are specifically looking at to improve, whether it's walking or running, um, Dr. Jess has created an app that helps you. We call it Couch to 5K mm -hmm. um, because basically you're going from sitting on a couch to walking or running a 5K, which is 3.2 miles. Um, and again, it doesn't happen overnight, I believe. Is it it's over 12, 12 week. weeks? 12 yeah, so program. you're looking at three yeah. months worth of work. Yeah. But I think it would be a great guidance if you're looking to increase in your cardiovascular in a specific realm of walking and running, yeah. not necessarily all the other ways to improve your cardiovascular. But you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think the reason why we built it the way we built it is because it is meant to kind of meet you where you are and say, hey, like, it's okay that you're not running a 5K. The whole point is that you're not running a 5K <laughs> and that you will be running a 5K in 12 weeks, which is three months, which is a much more sustainable way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we include, you know, mm -hmm. active warm up, our run days, which are interval training, uh, meaning that we are walking and running and not just trying to go off and run. Um, and it includes that balance of the uh, strength training that's specific to runners. So if you're trying to do a couch to 5K or, you know, you know, being able to have some sort of program and then get into a 5K distance, um, you want to make sure that you're not just going out, running as much as you can, petering out, and then getting frustrated and walking the rest of the way, beating yourself up that you didn't do it. Um, so the whole concept is is that you really do follow the program of you're going to do a short duration jog into a walk where you're going to recover, a short duration jog into a walk where you're going to recover. So the idea is that you're going to get your heart rate up to the point where you're pretty uncomfortable and then you're gonna walk and get it back down, but we're not gonna go back down the resting. We're gonna bring it back down enough that you're kind of like catching your breath again, and then we're gonna go back to it. And then we're gonna bring it back down. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna go back to it, and then we're gonna bring it back down. And so each time we kind of get up into that uncomfortable range, your body's gonna better tolerate being in that uncomfortable range. Yeah. So now you're gonna be able to hold that for longer, so our walks or our jogs start getting longer, and then our recovery starts getting shorter. And then surely over time, it becomes a run. We get into the full 5K. And we're going to tie in the strengthening that we talked about last week because we do need to make sure we're following up with all of the stressors that are happening in the body. But we do need to make sure that we're protecting our joints, that we're being proactive with all of that as well. So a cardio program is not the end all be all. It's not, we put all of our eggs into the cardio basket. That's not how it works. It's very, very important as is strength, as is mobility, as is flexibility. And so it all matters. Mm -hmm. So just like on our plate of food, it all matters. Yeah. We can't just eat green stuff. We have to eat every color of the rainbow. Exercise is the same way. It's about balancing it out. And so that way we're really meeting our body where it, where it needs to be met. And then we can very much prevent a lot of injury and really think, be very forward thinking about our our health and how our body uh, functions at its best. Yeah. So last week we talked about strength um, and we're upcoming is flexibility and mobility, all of which are super important to have a well-rounded exercise routine mm -hmm. um, and just to keep your body healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so stay tuned for that. Um, we would really appreciate it if you like what we're putting out there. Subscribe to us on YouTube or podcasts, anywhere podcasts are available. Um, and share it with a friend or family member that you feel like would really benefit from this information. Um, we just want to 
help as many people as possible. Absolutely. And if you're interested in an app, I mean, you can download it for free. There's a free trial. So if it's not for you, get rid of it, you know? <laughs> um, but if you like it, use it. That's kind of the whole point, you know? Um, it's accessible. It's called Exercise Now colon Full Body because um, it's all like full body, the way you're thinking. Um, so and we'll link to everything in the description below and all that kind of fun stuff. So um, we love February. We love talking about exercise and movement. Obviously, we're physical therapists, so it's our jam. And uh, hopefully you all find this helpful and stay tuned for next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to the episode today. If you would like to learn more about how Two Gals can support you, then join our Two Gals Insiders membership, which can be found at www.2-gals.com. Also, don't forget, follow us on social media. We're on Facebook as well as Instagram. Okay, everybody. Bye. Enjoy your week.